service dog Q&A get to know me um, survey I guess so I wanted to do that I thought it'd be a lot of fun I wasn't tagged by anyone but I thought it would be a lot of fun to answer these questions um, but before we get started I just want to say thank you to everyone who is joining us today if you're interested in following um, either of us on Instagram Faraby is Faraby underscore fable and I am knit in the zone so let's get started um, so the first question is what is your dog's name age and breed so Faraby is her name um, she is a standard poodle and she is 14 months old question two is your service dog a service dog in training or fully trained Faraby would be considered a service dog in training question three how many tasks does your dog know she currently knows three tasks and then she knows three and we're learning three more question four what is your dog's favorite treat and favorite toy? Favorite treats, she loves everything. So I don't think I've ever given her any treats that she doesn't like. <laughs> I would say the things she likes the very most are um, either like really soft treats, she loves those. So anything, it can be even like coconut treats, um, anything like that. It can also be meaty treats, but she likes a soft thing. And then her favorite toy that varies honestly like week to week but right now she really likes the rainbow squeaky thing that she got in her wagwell box question five what do you feed your dog so Faraby eats life abundance the all stages formula um is what she's eaten her whole entire life is what her breeder recommended and i did my own research because i had never heard of life abundance until i got Faraby, and i was blown away um before that, I was kind of alternating between Blue Buffalo, Wellness, and what's the other one? Farmina, um, and Koha. Um, just kind of, I had some stuff that was cans, some stuff that was dry, you know, kind of alternating between that throughout my other dog's lives. And I really, really think that Life Abundance just blows all of those out of the water. Um, they've been in business over 20 cents in years and they've never had any recalls or anything so I really like them for that and then their ingredients are also like super awesome um, they have a probiotic prebiotic they have a lot of things in the dog food itself that are awesome so check them out if you haven't already um, there is a link for them in Farabee's link tree so if you're interested in you know learning about their food go check it out so question six is what is your current gear setup so I had to get up and go grab these, but currently we're alternating between a few vests, um, and right now this is my favorite one. Um, it is, as I'm filming this, it's July 1st, so coming up on Independence Day here in the U.S., and this is my favorite one. Um, I made this specifically for the, you know, kind of Independence Day holiday. Um, it is red, white, and blue, although I know this isn't flag print by any means, but it still is kind of that patriotic feel. And then Faraby had picked out this ribbon for us. And so this is my current favorite vest for her. Um, these are ones that I've made, so you know they're exactly how I like them. As far as size-wise, they're very small on her. Like, I would call it kind of like a bikini version of a service dog, service dog vest. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's very light for her to wear because it's hot outside, but this is my favorite one right now. Um, and then of course my other one that's a favorite that's not for like patriotic stuff is this one. So it's the exact same thing, exact same shape and stuff. It's just purple um, with little blue birds and purple flowers and um, you know, it has coral pockets, but yeah. So these are my current favorite vest. Question seven. What is your dream gear setup? So I don't really know that I have a dream gear setup. Um, I like these little tiny, like short vest. So I like this um, a lot for right now. So I don't know that I have a dream gear setup, so to speak right now. Um, I would just say pretty stuff in general. So I like pretty stuff every once in a while. Um, we do have a one, what's it called? One tigress vest. So it's more tactical looking and I do like that whenever it's cooler outside. Um, that would be my favorite one really, 
but because it's so hot, it's in the at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit right now where I live. Um, so it's just better to have something like smaller and cuter rather than the big bulky, bulky one tigress vest for her, just so that it's um, you know cooler and, and nicer. But I really like the one tigress vest a lot because it has a lot of room for patches and stuff, and it has you know very big pockets because a lot bigger vest. Um, and it's just really hardy and also it just looks cool because it's tactical and it's just, you know, kind of looks badass. So I like that a lot. Question eight, what is your favorite patch? Okay, I've ordered some patches from Patience and Love and they haven't arrived yet. So I have a feeling whenever they get here, they will be my favorites. But currently my favorite patch, and this does not match this vest, but it's just this one, the super basic, this is service dog, what does it say? No touch, no talk, no eye contact. Um, and I've actually ordered the same exact one in gray and white because I feel like it would go on more, you know, stuff that doesn't have like brown or pink on it. So I've ordered one of those, the exact same one, just a different color. But that's my current favorite patch. And I know that is like just the most basic patch ever, but I like it, it gets the point across. You know, it's, um, it's not rude or anything, and it's just, you know, very blunt to the point, but not in a jerk way. So I like that. Question nine. What is the most challenging part of being a service dog handler? I would say dealing with the public who really don't know um, how to act around service dogs. And it's not, I don't mean that to be rude because I know a lot of people, you know, they're just being nice. Like I seriously have not had anyone be rude to me about having a dog with me anywhere at all. So it's just the people who don't know and who, um, you know, try to approach you and tell you how good your dog is and how cute they are and how great they're doing. And then they try to tell their dog how good they are and how cute they are and how great they're doing. Um, so I would say that's the biggest challenge. I don't like to be rude to people. So even if someone's like, you know, trying to talk to my dog or distracting her, it's really hard for me to be like, okay, you can't talk to her though. And even though sometimes inside I'm like, mm, you know, shut up, <laughs> don't talk to her. Um, but it's really kind of difficult for me to be, I don't know, assertive and like, I feel like you kind of almost have to have like a, a toughness about you and be like, okay, you know, leave her alone. And that would be the most difficult part because I'm not, I don't know, I'm not that way. Like I'm not uh, really pushy to where I'll, you know, want to correct somebody. Now, I will say if someone was running up to us, that's different. Or if somebody's dog is coming towards us, oh, that's a totally different thing. Like I, I get stern with that. But just as far as like, um, for example, the other day whenever we were at Walmart, we had uh, an older couple who had walked up and the lady was, you know, telling me and Farabee how good Farabee was doing and she was talking to Farabee and I was like, yeah, you're really not supposed to talk to her. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I feel bad that I've corrected somebody who's old enough to be my grandmother first off. And then <laughs> also I don't want anyone to feel bad. So there's that. And then, yeah, so that would be the hardest part for me. So question 11, favorite part of being a service dog handler. So my favorite part is definitely having her with me and just knowing that, you know, I have someone to let me know if there's something gonna happen wrong to me. Um, knowing that if I do have something happen, you know, she's right there with me to protect me, so to speak. That's my favorite part. And then also she's just a great little companion. So I like having her with me just in the world. Question 12, what do you hate being asked? I would say the thing I really don't like to be asked is if I have the training patches on, which a lot of times I've honestly started phasing those patches out because I've noticed that I get this question a lot. And that question is, who are you training her for? Or the other thing that kind of goes with that is, what group do you train for? Or are you, a dog, are you taking new clients? Um, and because I'm not a dog trainer, if someone asks something like that, it puts me in the position to have to say, no, she's for me. And then usually the next question is either, what's wrong with you? Or, oh, you don't look, look like there's anything wrong with you. And then it kind of becomes a almost um, 
prying sort of questions, which I don't think people set out to do that. I've noticed if I don't have the training patches on, I've not had questions at all whenever I don't have training patches on. If I just have service dog, people don't ask anything. They just kind of go about their merry way. They might talk to her, but they don't ask questions. Um, other than maybe something about her, which, you know, is she a full poodle or is she a doodle? We get that sometimes if she's, uh, if she needs a haircut basically on her face. Um, or sometimes people ask um, how old she is or something like that, but I don't really get the questions that bother me unless I have the training patch on. And then that question generally is, who are you training her for? And then it's followed up by, oh, you don't look like there's anything wrong with you. Question 12, what is one thing you wish everyone knew about service dogs? I wish everyone knew not to talk to them and to ignore them and to pretend like they're not there um, when they're working. Obviously, whenever Fairby's not working, you know, she likes to talk to people and stuff too, but whenever she's working, it's important that she focuses on just working on what we're doing. So I wish people just knew to, you know, kind of ignore her. Question 13, what advice do you give a new service dog handler? I would say my biggest piece of advice is expect questions. Um, and not necessarily from people trying to stop you from going in places, but expect questions from the general public, expect to get looked at. Um, not in a mean way, people just look because you have a dog with you and it's exciting. Um, expect to hear, oh my God, that lady has a dog, or oh my God, that guy has a dog, a lot. Um, expect to hear things like kids asking to pet your dog or kids asking their parents loudly if they can pet the dog. Just kind of expect that. Also expect that people are going to take pictures and videos of your dog without your permission. And I know it's rude for people to do that. Um, but it happens and we've actually had a few incidences where I've been training her um, like just working on downstairs and stuff in stores and people will actually like stand at the end of the aisle and just like watch like there's a TV show happening and um, the first few times that happened it was really awkward because I didn't know if they were doing it because they thought I was doing something wrong and I didn't know what to expect. Um, this was probably when Fairview was maybe probably 10 months, nine or 10 months old. Um, and we just started doing public access and you know, it was just really weird and I didn't know what was gonna happen. So it made me feel awkward, which made me feel almost like I was ready to, to you know, defend what we were doing. But then I realized quickly because it started happening more and more because we were going out more and more, I started realizing that people are not trying to be rude. They're just trying, they're just like amazed, you know, to see a dog well behaved because most, not to be mean, but most household pets are not well behaved when they go out in public. So if you do have a service dog and it's doing tasks in public, it's laying in an aisle where you tell it to go, or it's, you know, maybe doing a block for you or doing something like that, people are amazed. So expect to get attention because people are genuinely just, I don't know, impressed, I guess. And so they do want to look and see. And then also it's a dog and you don't have a dog as a customer in a store a lot of times. So people are, you know, just, it draws attention. So that would be the advice I would give people is expect that you're gonna have people watching you. Okay, so I think this is question 14. Are your friends and family supportive of you having a service dog? Um, to be honest, I've never asked because it's not up to anyone else other than me. Um, it doesn't matter if anyone's supportive or not. I know that my parents are supportive because they've, you know, let it be known that they are, but I've never asked anyone else if they're supportive because it doesn't matter and it's none of their business. Um, so I don't know. No one has said they aren't, but you know, it. It doesn't matter to me because it's no one's choice. It's like, is it okay with your friends that you're on taking a medication? I mean, it just doesn't matter. Okay, I think this is question 15. Um, how did you decide a service dog was right for you? Actually, I didn't even decide that at all. Um, Bella started alerting me to problems I was having and I didn't understand that she was doing that. I didn't know what was happening. And then I put it together after several times of her alerting me to upcoming 
problems. Um, she was really good at telling me well before I was gonna have something happen. She would just like woo at me and dig at me and stuff until I would sit down and let her, like she was little, so she would stand on me and put her paws on my chest and like get right, like right here in my face. So Bella actually showed me that it was even a thing that I would possibly need. And then um, when Bella passed away, I didn't have that obviously because Bella was gone. And so at that point, I still had Oscar. Oscar didn't do that kind of stuff. And I really missed having somebody there who would do that kind of stuff. So whenever I got um, therapy, it was with the intention that hopefully she would be able to be a service dog. Um, and she is from a place that breeds a lot of service dogs. I have a lot of dogs that go into the service dog programs and they have you know a lot of success with theirs so whenever i found her breeder i was hoping that would work out for me too um i knew that i needed a dog immediately though so my thing was i had to owner train and i feel like we've been very successful i've had dogs my whole life so um i feel like i was somewhat equipped to do that and plus i knew what i needed a service dog to do because of Bella had actually just done that naturally. So because of having Bella kind of show me, you know, from a dog's perspective, how that works, it's kind of helped me to shape fairly into what I need. I think Bella is the reason that I even knew a service dog was the thing that would be good for me at all. So we'll blame it on Bella. <laughs> I think this is question 16. So after your service dog retires, will you get a new one? Yes, if I'm still in a position to where I would benefit from a service dog, I will. 17. If you got another one, what would you get? I don't know. I think this is question 18. What does your service dog struggle with the most? She struggles with, I would say the very hardest thing for her is not barking um, if someone's talking to her because she wants to talk to them. Like she's a talker. She talks to me a lot, and if someone is talking to her and you know interacting with her, she really wants to go talk to them too. So I would say that's her biggest struggle, probably. I think this is question 19. What service dog team inspires you? I would say the guide dogs in general really inspire me because they are just it's crazy that they know all the different things they know. And I know a service dog knows so much too, but a guide dog is just a next level, like, they're like the MVPs of this. <laughs> Not to say all the service dogs aren't good, but guide dogs, I mean, you know, those guys are just, it's crazy. So I would say guide dog teams and handlers, guide dogs and their handlers are the teams that inspire me most. Um, 20, I guess? Have you ever had major public access issues? Not ever with therapy. I've never had anyone say anything, stop me, question me. Never even had to hand out an ADA card. With Bella, I did have one incident and it wasn't even like a access issue. It was whenever I was leaving, I was at a grocery store and I knew this lady was gonna say something to me because she was eyeballing me at checkout and it was a manager and she just was kind of like, you know, you can, you know how it is when someone's gonna say something to you when they have a thing to say. Um, she kind of halfway followed me out, like side by side, kind of, and lowly told me as I was walking out, only service dogs are allowed in here. And I was like, she's a service dog, and she's like, well, you're carrying her a bag, so I don't think so, or something. And I will give her this. Bella was in a bag because Bella was, number one, at the time, Bella was probably 10 or 11 years old. The other thing, Bella was 10 pounds. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna make my 10 pound dog walk around a whole entire grocery store while I get groceries, number one, when she can ride in a bag because she needs to do psychiatric stuff anyway. The ground ain't gonna help her. So, I mean, it's not gonna hurt her to be up here. Um, and it is apparently perfectly legal for your dog to be in a, a pouch on you or in a bag or whatever, as long as it's not like when they can't get to you. But like hers was one of those, um, like the ones where their head sticks out the front type of bag, kind of like a little purse situation. So I know it doesn't look good, 
I'm not saying that it looks good, but it is legal and you can do it. And that lady was just a whatever. But that's the only time I've had anyone say anything to me ever, 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 ever. And I mean, you know, so that was it. Last question. What are your team colors? So we don't have necessarily like set team colors that anything that I have a color choice on that's gonna be like more of a staple piece for us that we're gonna use all the time. I try to get in purple or black just so that it's kind of, you know, cohesive. Um, but with that being said, I also have a ton of different color vests. Like I like to make her match me and I like to have freedom to wear whatever I wanna wear. I don't wanna have to say, well, this is gonna really look dumb with my dog's vest. <laughs> so, you know, I like for her to have kind of a wide variety of stuff. So, we don't necessarily have set colors, but if it's stuff that's like, um, her first vest was purple, her harness is purple, her leash is purple, her collar, her flat collar is purple. Well, it's actually jewel tones, but it has a heavy presence of purple. Um, like her, I know if you can see her over here, but her little hair wraps that we use are purple. Her, the paper wraps are purple for her. So a lot of things are purple, but also I, have a lot of other colors too. So that's all of the questions. I hope this has been fun for you to watch. Um, if you've enjoyed it, leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload a video. Also, if you're interested in following Fairby or me on Instagram, all of those links are below for you guys. So we hope you're having an awesome week and we will talk to you soon. Bye guys. <laughs>